so like I said the time has come for God to put an end to all of these uh, religious hypocrites Amen. it's time to be real okay it's time to be real all right you said that you have no sin God said you're a liar okay Job chapter 35 Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou saidest my righteousness is more than God's? Who do you think you are? Chapter 31 of Proverbs. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Mm-hmm. A woman can do everything right and still have no love. If I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. I gain nothing from that. If I sell all that I have and give it to the poor people and don't have any love, if I don't have the love of God, the unconditional, tried in the fire, do you understand something? Y'all have been lying on God. He does not hate poor people. God loves the sinner. L-O-V-E-S. The only one he hates is the puffed up, proud Satan and the synagogue of Satan. Those self-righteous. Amen. Humble yourself. God bless you. Amen. What type of a personality does God really want us to have? Amen. Even towards the president. Let's go to Daniel. Even towards the president. Humble yourself. Amen. You want a Hollywood life but you don't want no discipline. And when I say Hollywood, I'm not talking about the people trying to get in there, going up to the, the poor poverty street corners and worshiping snakes and trying to do magic tricks. No, I'm talking about those that God actually bestowed his blessings upon. And this world engrafted them in and said, we want to use your gift to promote what we want to promote to tear down the black community. I guess I said too much. Okay, Daniel chapter 6, verse 21. There's so many vegans in California. There's so many people there that do what's right. So no, they're not going to have a whole bunch of cold weather and poverty. For what? What makes you poor is eating too much death. If it's dead and you ate it. That's what makes you poor. You didn't know that? Because when your, the life of your body is, is containing your blood. And once you have more dead corpuscles in your blood, you become poor. No matter how many dollars you have. Very poor. I'm getting ready to be 37 years old this year. 37. Amen. 37 years old. God has been good to me. He's been good. Thirty-seven. <laughs> you are crazy. Okay. Now I'm doing a hundred uh, ounce enemas. A hundred ounces every day in the morning, waking up. That's how I have my energy. It's almost five in the morning now. Okay. Death begets death. So what kind of attitude should you have towards the president? Let's see what kind of attitude did Daniel have. And it's confirmed in the New Testament. Let it come back to your memory. What the Bible says about how you should treat your leaders and those that are in authority. Okay. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 21. What were his words to the king? 
Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Could David say that to Saul? Now, even though Saul was anointed by God, the church folk are our biggest enemies. They seemingly have no sin. You big fat hippopotamus. I'm sorry, but that's fake. People want something fake. They don't want anything real that exposes who they are. Even though we're willing to expose who we are. Just to let you know it's the power of God and not us. They don't want that. They want something fake. Exodus 33 and 17. No, I'm sorry, 18. Hope you all are having a blessed new year. Amen. Amen. Today is the 22nd. I just ended this Daniel fast, and God has been good to me. God has been good to me on this fast. God has brought me through. He's brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. I've been Daniel fasting since I was a teenager. Amen. To bring the new year in. Glory be to God. And I've been able to do these uh, enemas, amen, with the water um, and lemons, lemons juice and a juicer for, this is now year 17. I'm going to be 37 this year. God has been awesome. And when I put that water up into me, I began to speak the word of God into it. And the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost enters into me. And uh, the winds and the waves obey me. So you need to get some real power in your life. So you can stop physically fighting your enemies. Amen. Jesus said, I am he. And they all fell back. That's the kind of power you, you need to get in your life. Okay. That's the kind of power I have. God bless you. Amen. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. This is Moses. Amen. You need to get that kind of a lifestyle where you can say, Lord, show me your glory. Not in a church service, not a feeling, not for the things that I need, but for the power that I need to resurrect the dead, to take back all that the devil stole from me in the whole community, the whole United States, the whole world, the world of worlds. Come on, why, why limit yourself to little tiny paychecks and little tiny cars and my little car and my, my children and their tuition. Why do that? Why not care for the whole world like you say you love God? He loved the whole world. Stop this foolishness about how God can't stand certain types of people. Stop it. You are a liar. Yes, Jesus is the way that we get to God. But don't stay in the elementary stages. Don't teach people to stay in the elementary stages so that you can brainwash them and keep them in your church services giving you money stop that allow them to go ye into all the world and teach and preach the gospel and heal the sick people people need help they don't need to sit up in your church and miss out on heaven they need to fulfill all the assignments that God has for them stop holding people back especially children God said it's time out. It's time out. When you see a child going forth, you tutor that child. You get three, four, five elders around. And you start mentoring that child so that they can grow up into the vessel that God would have them to be. At age 33 or age 35. Turning kingdoms upside down. Tearing the kingdom of Satan down. Amen and amen. Let's keep reading. Okay. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Mm -hmm. My what? My goodness. God said his goodness. 
and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. That's right. And he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Amen. And the Lord said, behold, there's a place by me and thou shalt stand upon the rock and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by that I will put thee in the cl cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand. Okay, I'm going to cover you with my hand while I pass by. Cover you so that the glory of the Lord will not burn you to pieces. Amen? While I pass by and I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts. Amen? But my face shall not be seen. What a glory he saw. Glory be to God. So to see God is to envelop him. And that is something that you will never, ever lose. Because the blood of Jesus, and I mean that with all my heart, not physical blood. <laughs> not physical blood. DNA. Have you ever heard of somebody having a blood transfusion? See, when God even passes by you, you get infused with his power because of how much he loves you. He just goes right on the inside of you and takes out everything that doesn't even belong there. Just passing you by. As we, the people of God who walk with God, even as we pass by, God's power is doing a mighty work in your life. Amen and amen. Humble yourself. Dispose of those things that do not please God. Do it as soon as possible. Amen. You're only holding yourself back. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. I'm going to keep reading. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew the two, the two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these two tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto the Mount Sinai, and pre present thyself there to me in the top of the mount, and no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man see, be seen throughout the, all the mount, neither let flocks nor herds feed before the mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rode up, rose up early in the morning, and went up into, unto Mount Sinai, and the, as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. Okay? And the Lord descended in the cloud. Okay? It doesn't stop there. Then he descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Jesus was with Moses. I don't care what you say. Jesus was with him. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Glory be to God. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. I'm telling you, Jesus has been coming down to this earth for so many years, but the first time he came in flesh to die for sins, that's the only time that some recognized him was when he came in the flesh because people are flesh focused but Moses had enough faith Abraham had enough faith to know that wow David had enough faith to know wow this is Jesus this is God this is the Holy Ghost Elijah had enough faith see when the kings in first and second kings when they died do you understand they died when Stephen passed away he fell asleep the Bible said he fell asleep Amen. Because when you know Jesus, you don't die. When you know him, when you walk with him every day in power, and his power sustains you better than food. He is my daily bread. He's the air I breathe. What are y'all doing? 
I don't know. I just It just doesn't make any sense. I look at y'all and I see the pain and the suffering and I'm thinking to myself, what in the world are they doing talking about they serve Jesus? I just don't understand. Okay. Long suffering and abundant in good and goodness and truth. His goodness. Say with me, his goodness. He is good. God is good. When Jesus came in his flesh, don't you know he came and he said, why are you calling me good? The man called him good master. He said, there is none good but God. What did that mean? He was not fully God yet. Show me the scripture where it says that when he was in his flesh that he was fully God. That would mean that we could, he said that we're his joint heirs. That means we're fully God too. You liars from the pits of hell. Stop making up these false doctrines. Where is it found? And every time I tell you what you've done, you want to throw the whole Bible away. Don't do that. Know how to receive correction so that you won't keep hurting all these people. You're not accomplishing what God asked you to accomplish. He did not ask you to reject people and throw them in the trash. He never said that. He asked you to draw them. He said to lift God, lift him up and that he could draw them. He wants you to lift up Jesus so you can draw them. He's not talking about throwing people out in the trash and puffing yourself up. That is the synagogue of Satan. If you see people doing that, run. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. It's right there. Okay? We're in Exodus. And that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. And upon the children's children. Under the third and the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head. Amen? Toward the earth and worshipped. And that's what we need to start doing. We need to become more humble. He did what? So he was outside. That's why I pray outside. I don't pray outside to be seen. I pray outside because I know that God is right there. There's a host of heaven. Amen. Angels ascending and descending. Glory be to God. Amen. Born in San Diego, California. And our pastor one day, he told us to pray outside. And I know you devils want to get angry and punish everybody for everything that they have done. To help me, elevate me to get where I need to be. But you need to stop because you shall proceed no further. Amen. I want you to stop yourself so that God doesn't have to stop you. So that it won't be a painful awakening. It'll be just, okay, I repent. Amen. Okay. So, and then verse 9, the last verse. And he said, if now I have found gra grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. Let my Lord, I pray thee, let Jesus. Go before me. Let Jesus lead me. So what it means to lead you is not to tell you where to go. No, he's going to go for you. Okay? He's going to go before you. So he's going to be right there. Okay? He's going to go and you're going to follow. With compassion. With justice. With mercy. With humility tried in the fire not false humility uh, uh. pity party and depression is not of god amen amen if satan is attacking someone pray for that person okay pray pray in the name of jesus bind that devil fight amen don't make fun of people when they're going through stuff but i'm letting you know there's a difference here amen for it is a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity for our sin and take us for thine inheritance. Amen and amen. We're going to ask. God bless you. These stiff necked people. <laughs> so, Y'all got to excuse me today. Bless the name of Jesus. Stiff necked people. Man, I was in John all this morning. Um, and the day of Pentecost uh, came before my mind. I thought about how John uh, had got arrested. And uh, I thought about Stephen. Amen. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. So Stephen as well. Um, 
he told them that they are what? A stiff-necked, stiff-necked people. Amen. Chapter 7, verse 51. He's stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, in heart and ears, in heart and ears. You know how to dress right. You know how to look right. You know how to act right. Acting skills. You're just an actress. You're just a liar. Amen. You're just an actress. You're just a liar. It's just a put on. But you are uncircumcised in heart and ears. So when the word of God comes forth, you push it away. You are only damaging yourself. Okay? You're not hurting us. <laughs> Amen. You are not hurting us. We are walking in victory. We are walking in dominion. This ain't about being one with the sun and one with the water in the universe. This is about dominion over the earth, over the fish of the sea, the animals. Look at us and say, okay. Amen. I don't know what y'all doing, but it's not of God. It's not what he meant for us to have. There's some things missing. Okay. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist what? The Holy Ghost. Even in church services. I watch y'all. I'm watching. You can dance a little bit. But let's listen to what he says. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? It's the word of God that they hate. It's his word. It's his word. Let's go to Acts 5, uh, 4, 13 and 5 and 32, and then we're going to keep reading about Stephen. Amen. <coughs> they can't stand the word of God. Because why? They don't want God to have mercy on people. They want God to be like Satan. To always go to God and say, look what they did. Look what they did. Amen. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. We just read the same thing about Moses. You got to understand something. Moses wasn't the best speaker. Okay. You understand what I'm trying to say to you. So the power of God is what we reverence and give homage to. See, repent ye and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Stop worrying about somebody else's sins. You understand? But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets. That's why you need to study the prophecy books. Don't let anybody tell you to just study the New Testament. They're liars. Amen. Okay. And his name through faith in his name. Okay. Through faith in his name hath made this man strong. Hallelujah. Whom ye see and know. Yea and faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That's the problem. You thought you had a pretty good system going, didn't you? You thought you was fooling so many people by loud words and, and you know, and eloquent speech. Mm -mm. No cupcake. That ain't even what God is requiring of you a pure heart okay amen so 4 and 13 okay now we're going to 5 and 32 you ready 5 and 32 mm -hmm. help us Jesus only Jesus and we are his witnesses of these things and so it also is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. So who did God give the Holy Ghost to? Everybody, because it's a free gift. Anybody can have the Holy Ghost. Now, you need to first walk in love. 
You need to obey God by hearing the words of his son. You need to study your Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You need to study the words of Jesus. Listen to what he's saying about love. Listen to what he's saying in Luke 18 about the man who said, God, I thank you that I'm not like that, those adulterers and those fornicators. And he said, don't be like that. Don't be as the hypocrites when you pray. Go into your secret closet and shut the door. Study those words so that you can receive you the Holy Ghost for real and bear much fruit. Okay? Ezekiel 17. You need to bear fruit or you will be destroyed. Okay? Yeah. Titus 1 and 12. That's why I said, don't worry about other people. Don't worry about me. You don't know how many whippings I get from God every day. Okay, don't, don't worry about that. And he ain't whooping me about no clothes either. Attitude is everything. Yeah. Titus 1 and 12. <clears throat> the Lord said, stop. Hold, hold on, daughter. Hold on. Read Galatians. Amen. Yes, Lord. Lead my hands and my feet. Glory be to God. <laughs> Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. What did I just say? Examine yourself. Wherewith Christ hath made us free. Why am I doing this? Why do I do that? Why do I react that way to that? Why does that make me upset? Why does getting up in the morning make me sick? Why do, why do I hate even looking at vegetables? What's wrong with me? Or fruit or whatever. You know, things that are, you know are good. Okay? Why do I hate the good things and love the evil? Examine yourself. Okay? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay? Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. So why are you worried about somebody else's sin? You have to bear much fruit. That's what you have to do. You must bear fruit. You cannot be worried about other people and their idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. You are supposed to love. Lift up Jesus, let him draw them, and cleanse them. As soon as he passes by, he's going to permeate all of that filth, all of it. If you would just do it, stop getting angry, and, and be not envious against the wicked and the evildoers. Okay, don't do that. That is a waste of time and a waste of energy. He wants you to what? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. So what happens is when you focus on these sins, even if it's another person's sins, that will envelop you. You'll become wrathful. You'll become strifeful to, uh, towards the, the, striving, the striving people. You'll become a murderer towards the murderers. You'll begin to murder them with your mouth. Okay, you will become a drunken to the drunkards. You'll say, you ain't supposed to eat that. You're supposed to pig out on this. You ain't supposed to have no alcohol. You're supposed to eat uh, lamb chops or whatever, okay? So again, that argument about Cain being the vegetarian, the Abel was the meat eater. You dummy, they were both vegetarian. So the bigger sacrifice was for the one who knew he didn't want to kill an animal because they did, they both didn't want to kill no animal for the first time. So that was a bigger sacrifice unto God. You think God cares about flesh? Unless you're giving it to him. No, he don't care about no flesh. Look, God, this tastes so good. Sacrifice it to me. The angel came to Manoah and said, no, I don't want your, uh, your food. No, I'm okay. But sacrifice it unto God. Burn it. Let him know that you want him and not that. Okay. <laughs> Y'all need to get it together. Okay? Stop making up stuff in the Bible. It's, it is a holy Bible. It is a holy book. Treat it as such. Faith. Okay? You need to have gentleness. Is it gentle to beat people as much as you can, as hard as you can? Hmm? 
is metal facilities. Is that gentleness? No. Gentleness is a plush bed that you would want to sleep in. Whatsoever you would have people do to you, do to them. Because if you felt comfortable putting people in a locked metal cage, believe me, hell will be just like that for you. What you have done unto others. That's the same thing. What you've done to the least of these my people. That's the same thing that will happen to you. Here you go. God loves you so much that he wants you to learn. Amen. If you have to burn a thousand years, you will be uh, in the afterlife. You will have a body, a soul suitable, okay, to endure the flames of hell. Okay, that's all right. A lot of people feel that way. But I'd rather live in spiritual power and peace. Amen. That's just how it is. <laughs> Against such there is no law. Meekness and temperance. Come on now. If you have no temperance, and we can see that by, you know, the, how your belly protrudes. If you have no temperance, then you can't fool God to say, God, but I didn't smoke or drink or have sex. God will see you. You do not have that uh, discipline. You need discipline. Get it together. Okay? That's what I said. What God tells me I can eat, I eat it. Okay? If I have shrimp. I don't, I don't care, once a year or something. It doesn't matter to me. It's not about a strict diet. It's about a life of sacrifice. Know the difference. One has power, one has none. Okay? So we're talking about dominion with God. Okay? Let every man, chapter 6, prove his work, his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. You understand that okay get it together for every man shall bear his own burden get it together let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things be not deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap okay all right for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap at life everlasting amen so go ahead defend um whatever you want to defend okay but whoever you guys think you are you religious puffed up proud uh followers of satan i pray okay that you get it together seek some professional help professional Christian, godly counsel, okay? Because it's time out for you saying these words when the words of God are holy, tried in the fire, pure. Okay? Stop mixing all of this filth into God's word. Stop trying to use Peter as an example of why you eat meat and somebody else can't eat. Stop trying to use Paul as an example. Go in the Bible, okay? And pull out every experience of Jesus Christ. And remember when he said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. You have no idea what it's like to walk with God and enjoy it. Because you're just looking at the physical that's all you can see. Amen. The lust that you have. I remember what that was like. I just don't miss it. I like having control. Self-control. Of my own body. My own system. God bless you. God be with you. Amen. Read Acts 1 through 8. All year long do you have the discipline to read eight chapters of the bible mm -hmm. but i see y'all reading a whole bunch of other books get it together god bless you